Okay. And we can go ahead and jump into this. So welcome to our second coach seminar for uh, this season. Uh, tonight, I just have you know, just some updates. Wanted to make sure everyone knows about what's happening next week. And then we can jump into uh, Q&A for a little bit. As it stands right now, we have um, 113 teams registered um, with a potential for six more that are still in progress at this stage. Um, <laughs> and we're going to be capping it at 120 teams in the region. Uh, as it stands, we had one team drop out so far. We expect to get everyone else to participate. And we had one overflow team from San Bernardino County that registered in our region because the other region closed. They may or may not be driving up to the Fresno qualifier um, in on the, the 17th. We will see. Uh, but for now, that's kind of where things are standing. Uh, we have a fair number of teams that are registered and in, which is pretty cool. We've got just a couple more teams to get through in terms of paperwork and um, some teams that still need to register for events. And I know we have some pendings in the system right now that we need to work through. But we've got 82 teams that are good out of that 113 um, with their paperwork, which is really cool. And then we just got some other, the remaining teams are in various states of getting their paperwork in and registered. In terms of what's happening next week, uh, I we mentioned this in our email blast this morning, but I did kind of want to make sure everyone was aware that um, myself and our judge advisor, Callie, will be um, out of the country uh, from the 31st to the 6th for conference to promote first in Rome. But that also means that any emails that are going to come in will be significantly delayed <laughs> in terms of responses. Yeah. Uh, we'll tr I'll try to keep on top of them. Some of my, And unfortunately, it's coincided with my other staff members busy as well. So it's like a very... There's going to be very few people being able to monitor that during the week. Um, so I, I know I have a tendency to reply to emails at 2 a.m., but it's going to get even more crazy uh, as <laughs> through that week. I hope to stay on top of it, but just so everyone's aware, if you send an email and you don't hear for a while, it's why. Um, I hope to start replying to everything and get everything cleared out by that Monday, the following on the 7th, um, and probably the 8th. But just so everyone's aware. I just wanted to make okay. make that announcement now, um, and it'll be in the next week's email blast as well. Oh, wrong computer. Sounds like it's for a great reason. Well, enjoy Rome. And <laughs> yes. Next yes, thank you. It's It was a kind of and a very spur-of-the-moment opportunity through the Fresno County of Office of Education, and uh, the organization that's running the conference is actually paying our way, so it's actually really cool to um, – that's a very – once in a lifetime opportunity for us to be able to do this and they wanted us to talk about first well, that's easy enough there you go <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. lane kirk oh welcome lane uh, hi so in terms of our uh, events right now uh we are as of last night these were our event numbers i did not have time to update them today but i will check really quick uh we are doing pretty good on our registrations. We did open up some of the slots at the Clovis North Qualifier for those teams that are registering really late, and we expect to have that one filled up to either 34 or 35, um, depending on the teams and how they, they are. Uh, if the teams from San Bernardino come up and all of that. Uh, Ridgeview Raptor Rumble should fill up to be 36. Buchanan is already closed, and we expect the Central one to fill up to around 22, maybe. Um, but those six of those teams are from the Central Unified The six teams that are in progress that I mentioned earlier are from the Central Unified School District. And so we're that, that event we're kind of playing by ear as we go forward over the next couple of weeks. Um, hi, Andy Person here. Oh, hi there. Welcome. Hello. Um, so in terms of our um, events, you can find them on our website. The link's there. Just wanted to remind everyone about upcoming dates. So this Friday is when we wanted all of our coach paperwork in and when we're going to freeze um, coach and team names. It's more of a soft deadline at this point. Um, 
basically it's saying we're not going to pull teams' names before this, but it might happen sometime after. Um, given the trip to Rome, it's probably not going to happen until after Rome. But we did want to try to get as many things in as we can. And if anything, the hard deadline will be the 9th of November when we close um, registration and all of that. Uh, registration fees, we want them all mailed into our partners as of the 9th. So just you got that. Uh, the payment information was attached to the registration receipt that everyone received when they um, signed up for an event. And for those that attended the cent that initially registered for the central qualifier, the information was not in there initially, but we added it later. And we sent out an email when we added it to all those those affected. And you can now view the receipt on the event registration page and see the correct um, payment information. Oops, I keep clicking the wrong button. So on the we have our qualifying events coming up. On the Wednesday prior to each event is when the judging profiles are due. That's You access that in Team Connect. You click the judging profile link for a team, and you'll be able to fill in that information. We will usually around noon when I pull those and noon or six I'll let everyone know as we get closer um, when, when that'll get pulled and sent to printing so that we can get all those ready and packed for our events for those teams that do make it to championship the, se the 22nd is the deadline for that uh, the championship registration which means if you do attend the December 17th event you only got five days to turn around and accept the registration invite to championship uh, on and then we have some deadlines for the championship I did want to kind of apologize for the the craziness that happened on the initial when we were open registration on the 12th there was some server hiccups that happened but we got everyone through uh, it was a bit bit of a putting it fighting fires over here on my end but we got everything through <laughs> Um, in terms of, oh, I had something else I was going to say, and it has fallen out of my head. Oh boy, what was I going to say? Mm. Oh, advancement. In terms of advancement, um, we will have 60 teams at the championship. And as we get closer to the 9th and probably the Monday prior to the November 19th event, so that would be the 14th, Monday the 14th is when we'll actually put out, start releasing the um, advancement percentages and how many teams are going to advance. Since we're going to have less than 120 teams, we're going to be looking at a 54, 55% advancement rate out of each qualifier, which means at a 24 team, there might be 12 or 13 teams advancing at the, uh, so there's well over half the teams at every event will advance this season to the championship. Um, yeah, so we're not planning on making any changes to our championship in terms of its size. So it'll that, that percentage will just be a function of however many teams we're confident and certain that will actually participate this season um, come the first qualifier. But we, until we get all of our teams in and all the paperwork process and all that, we won't really be able to announce that. I don't want to announce and keep updating this percentage. But assuming all teams participate, we're looking at around 113, 114 um, in the region, so 60 divided by 114 will be our advancement percentage for this for uh, this season. But again, we'll announce that in about three weeks when we get closer to that qualifier. Any questions up until with all the stuff I've covered for now? Team stuff, registration. Anything from anybody? Can you switch tournaments if there is opening, say, at the that December 10th one that wasn't open to North Maui teams? So we've we've allocated all spots at that event right now. Okay. Um, there is a chance that a team that we've allocated a spot to won't participate because there's still 15 teams that need to get through the paperwork and all that. Um, but as it stands right now, I don't – have any I have pretty high confidence I should say in all of the teams so they should all get through they're just some of them are late in getting into the system and doing all of that okay yeah and then I had 
two things from our school from Mountain View that have been having a lot of trouble putting their paperwork in. So, but I think that they have reserved spots at the Corvus North event. On the yes, I think one of your teams registered got the national registration fee paid last week, if I recall. Um, yes, <laughs> I've been hounding them forever. <laughs> <laughs> so there, I guess their material should be on their way. Uh, so yeah. They they've got a spot at that seventeenth November seventeenth no December seventeenth event yeah okay and we have a, one more team that just got their paperwork I think today they had it close to doing them but didn't get uploaded so I, do they also have a spot at the Corvus North Power Hour there we are if it shows up on their list of event registrations they do okay if it doesn't then they weren't part of that initial pool of teams. Have them log in and check. Thank you. Okay, team 28259. Oh, yeah, that's a. Oh, yeah. I'm. Since I have it, I can pull it up here real quick. Uh, yes, they have a spot at that event. So they just need to go okay. in there and actually click the button. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? Um, you had mentioned for the Central Unified Qualifier that there are five additional. I, I didn't quite hear what you said, is that there are five additional teams. So will that qualifier pretty much meet the 24 capacity? That's the one that's scheduled for November 9th. Yes. So I'm sure that there is some space from Central Unified. So the... Uh, uh, person who our, our tournament partner there um, asked us to reserve spots at that event for her teams and so all of her teams are actually in that 19 count already um oh, they are. Okay. yeah they um there are some other teams in the region three to four i would say that um have yet to register to complete the registration and those ones would have the spots there at central and so that's I would expect those teams that to at least get to a 22 or around 22, assuming those teams register for that event and can make it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will. Um, anything else? Okay. I will continue. I did want to um, talk about this again. I talked about the last seminar, and I'm going to talk about it again here. Um, we say, in some ways, the, the best way to learn the details of the program for those that are new is to actually sit on the other side of the table, especially in judging. Um, so we did want to invite everybody. They're all welcome to volunteer at events where your team is not participating. So every each team can only attend one event, so that leaves three other events this season that you're welcome to volunteer at as a judge, referee, pit admin, all those areas need volunteers, and it definitely helps. Especially if you're attending a later event and this is your first year, you can get some idea of how the events run by volunteering at an earlier one. Uh, is it possible for a team to come and observe at an event? Yes. All, all events are open to the public. The only thing that's hidden behind closed doors is judging. Okay, so great. each, but the pits are open to the public and the robot game area is open to the public. Great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, when you sign up as a volunteer, do you um, get, do you sign up for certain positions or? Correct, so the, the way that the, uh, so signups handled through Team Connect, and if you're already a screen coach in the national registration system, one of the two primary coaches, you don't actually have to do the volunteer screening stuff because you technically have already done it, and Team Connect knows that. Mm -hmm. And so you bypass the screening requirements, but it will ask you your three preferred positions. And on our website at this link here, we have a list of all of the positions available, what they mean, what's what you do. All training is done online, um, and we'll be posting that in the next hopefully week or two and there's a certification test at the end and we reserve our judging roles to be adults but um, for those with 
high school age kids, the robot game, the pit, the queuing, we are are open to high school and middle school students as well. And okay. you get a volunteer shirt and you get fed lunch and there's a bunch of snacks and so it's it's a fun day and you get to see what it's like on the other side, especially as a judge to understand what happens in the deliberations. Uh, it's it's one of those things, what happens in deliberations stays in deliberations. We're not allowed to talk about what the, the discussion's in there. It's confidential. Uh, it also, which Then there's also no rankings that come out of deliberations, which for those that are new make it hard to understand why there's no rankings and all that because we really don't generate rankings. It's all about discussions, the talking about the merits of each team. And um, to really understand that, the best way is to volunteer. And it's fun. I It's it's you're, you're having fun the whole time there's some you know it's it's the other side of the table uh, there's also some we're also looking for our next couple of years to recruit key roles which are the judge advisor head ref and head pit administrator um, if you're interested in those and what those are about we have some information on our website as well as you can email us either at contact at cbrobotics.org or volunteers at cbrobotics.org um, to learn more about what that entails um, with that, that kind of finishes what I wanted to talk about in the beginning, and I just kind of want to open this up to general Q&A now. I do have the rubrics and stuff as um, reference material, as well as the game table. Um, and I hope we'll be able to uh, talk about as much as we can and describe it the best we can in terms of any questions on the field. I think, and we have Phil on the phone as well, who can help answer any robot game questions. Um, and so we can just go from there. So I'll open the floor up to anyone who wants to ask questions. Um, I have a question about the scrimmage. Um, sorry, I joined late. Maybe you already uh, mentioned it. But um, I, if I remember right, you said that there is going to be judging sessions at the scrimmage, but the, not uh, officially scored and stuff. So for the, for the Buchanan bird brain scrimmage on the 5th? Yeah. Yeah, so they are... Um, they're just hosting practice matches throughout the day as well as – and there'll be scheduled practice matches for every team, assigned matches, I should say. And then it'll be a very informal um, project presentation where there'll be some judges there, some uh, adults there okay. that will be able to help critique, provide guidance. You know, this is what you – this in you know, just – they'll be able to present and then get guidance, but there won't be – they won't be filling out rubrics or anything like that. Right. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Cool. No problem. And I believe that there are still five spots open at that scrimmage. So if anyone is still interested in attending, you're more than welcome to. Uh, Buchanan has, you know, they w would prefer that everyone attends the whole day, but you don't have to attend the whole day. Um, they'll kind of work with you as needed to, you know, fix. But if you can't, if you only can make half the day, you'll only be able to participate in half of the the. Uh, uh, table matches and that type of thing. Do we know when the agenda for that day is coming out? I can make a note to ask. <laughs> uh, Buchanan is pretty much running that. Um, and so I will message them and see what they, when they're planning on getting all of that out. Okay. Uh, and the robot game is going to presentation time to get sort of scheduled ahead of time I'm assuming yes that was my uh, that's what was at least explained to me from the person running it over there okay. be published okay all right so I'll, I'll make a note of that oh, I... and I will I'll post it in the uh, Facebook group an answer so. Okay. Um, I also have a question regarding the robot game. Okay. Um, my kiddos have um, come up with a way um, for the mission where they um, where you're supposed to deliver the manure to the square one at a time. Mm -hmm. um, they have come up with a way to actually have the robot shoot one at a time and have it land in the square. 
would that count as delivery if the robot itself does not go there with it? Uh, I want to see this robot. Um. <laughs> They uh, came up with some clever <laughs> ideas for that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's cool. But they weren't sure if it would count, so they don't want to spend too much time working on it yeah. if it's not going to be allowed. So. Um. <laughs> I I had the challenge dogs open and then I closed them, so I'll need to open them again. Uh. Okay. Now, Phil, do you have any comments on this? I think you're on the line. If I remember correctly, it doesn't specify how it's supposed to be delivered. Okay. That's what we thought. I mean, as best we can tell, there's nothing that specifies they would not be able to do it that way. But I just wanted to make sure I had that clarity before I tell them to go ahead with it and make it work. <laughs> yeah, just... Kind of. Uh, currently, there's no nothing that may be specifying it, but if there is a robot update that says how to do it, and it uh -huh. is, then that would be that would be a problem. So right, right. now, I don't. Uh, one thing that should be mentioned is you need to make sure the robot only has possession of one manure at a time. Yep. Um, or they work that out. Okay. Um, because it says you can only have, it must be delivered one at a time or has possession of one at a time. Um, right. In the more section. So okay. that's just one thing to, to think about. But like yep. is being discussed, delivered isn't doesn't specify how. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Well, we'll see if they can uh, work that in. Right now it's kind of a, uh, if their other missions go fast enough that they have time to add that in, they, they might do it. So, And it's also right. an end of the match condition, so as long as they're in there at the end of the match, then uh -huh. it should be good. Right. Yeah. I, I look okay. forward to well, seeing this robot. Cool. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's cool. It's um, it, largely it came up when we started contemplating the possibilities um, uh, surrounding the fact that there's no junk penalty. So that helps. Yep. Anyway. Well, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a um, question about the robot thing as well. Um, are we allowed to use strings on our robots? The official rule there is that um, you can only use Lego string, and it and it can because Lego actually has rope and string, and it but it can be cut to length. Okay. If I recall. So this robot or Lego string, we would have to find it in one of the Lego sets. Correct. Okay. Um, I'm trying to or, find. Or uh, I, there's websites where you can order specific things like that. I know, okay. but I forget off the top of my head. Um, I know my husband has has ordered specific things like that before, but I can't remember where he got them. Um, yeah, because otherwise, like we have string from a set that is um, uh, like a crane. You know, it has a, a claw that right. drops down or, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. set. But some of those sets are really expensive. <laughs> if all, if okay. all you need is that one little thing, you know. So, um, okay. hang on a sec. I can ask him real quick if you want. Um, so, one site that I just remembered was Bricklink. I don't know if that's... Oh, that may be it. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm going to ask him real quick. It's Bricklink. Do you order specific Lego parts? At some point, do you remember where you ordered them from? What website? That would, uh, oh, yeah. that's Bricklink. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah, Bricklink, that B R I C K L I N K dot com. You can order every single type of Lego by piece and quantity. Um, and I mean, I just that's searched string, and there was 
in, in I searched string and there's 190 items with string in it. So there's oh th they have the 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 reels, the the actual string itself. You can buy string on the reels. So there's there's all kinds of things there. But yes. Okay. And um, when it comes time for uh, when it when we're at the qualifier, do we have to show that this is official? I mean, will the judges know? They'll be able to see it and know. Oh. They'll that you won't have. I mean, Lego string is obvious, especially either the elastic or the regular. Um, if they have questions, they'll ask you on it, but you shouldn't necessarily expect or you know the benefit of the doubt would apply in that case okay but you know if you use like eighth of an inch thick twine from home depot you know that the if it's obvious the judges will ask <laughs> or the referees will ask but okay <laughs> I have a question about the refrigerator and the food. Okay. Um, does the food, when they push it, does the food just come out randomly? It just comes out red, blue, white? Or does it come out both red, both white, both blue? Um, per the setup rules, the, re the re field reset puts them in however, whatever they please. Okay, so just random. Mm -hmm. And can we push that arm just like eight times in a row i i haven't read anywhere but i didn't know if i was missing somewhere that that you can't just push it and get all the food out at the same time am i i didn't know if i was missing something or okay just so i'm not no, the you one yeah you have to push it w one piece of food at a time you can't keep pushing it to get them to come out right but we don't have to push it and take one food and go and then come back and push it and do one food we can just no. sit and do eight times and, and yeah that's my understanding it, get it all yeah that's what okay i just want we were reading it and i'm like no i'm sure that um and can you pull the yellow arms or does it have to be pushed the lever in the back either way i think just just so I'm not the one talking, Phil or Steven, you want to take this? <laughs> if it doesn't say, you can do it. Okay. That, that answers my question. Cool. Any... And, and, and as, far, as far as if it doesn't say, is all of that just in in the manual right the um where all the project and core values and all that that unless something comes out um, that's where i'm reading all the rules if you will correct the robot the, game rules the challenge guide yes the it's like a 30 or 20 some odd page document yeah yes okay what we printed out that and the, okay okay just wanted to make sure that was my only go-to source but and i don't think first has not um pushed out a challenge update since okay. global challenge release on the 30th um but we'll be keeping tabs on it and if they push one out um if, if there is time i'll you know i'll make sure i'll note it in an email blast or, or on our facebook the facebook group but for now, there has not been an update, and I'm not sure if there will be an update. Uh, first is kind of transitioned to having uh, local regions kind of handle the robot game questions and official clarifications too. So that's kind of why I, we created that page. Kind of just reminded me of it. The new kind of Q&A page we have on our website under the team resources. Yeah. Um, okay. As we get questions that are common or if there's an official ruling that has to be made, we'll note it on that page. And everyone is welcome to submit any questions to us, and we'll go from there. Okay. Um, oh, I think this probably was covered in the last meeting, but I can't remember specifically what was said. But um, when uh, the, for the gecko mission, if 
we have our robot hanging on the wall at the end. The gecko can be on the robot hanging on the wall, but they don't have to be separate. Uh, the gecko hanging on the wall by itself and the robot separate from it. Does that sound right? Yes, yeah, so you're asking if, if the if the the gecko is considered on hanging from the wall if it's just hanging off the robot. Um, Stephen yeah. or Phil, I'll let you take that. Um, yes, the gecko um, being fully supported by the robot when the robot is fully supported by the wall is being considered as the gecko being fully supported by the wall and that therefore counts. will count. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Thank you. And again, that's unless first puts out an official update sure. saying otherwise. Okay. I, I may put that, that gecko question up on our uh, that, that Q&A page just so that if anyone else has that question, we'll have an answer for it because it's kind of an edge case. Um, uh -huh. But we don't know if first is going to put out an update, uh, but if they do, we'll, we'll keep tabs on it. But for now, that, that is how we are interpreting it in our region is that gecko on the robot with robot on the wall will count as gecko is scoring, assuming it's all fully supported by the wall. Yeah. Any other questions on anything? Um, I have a question on um, for the presentation. Um, the room in which um, we're we're registered for the Central Unified Qualifier. Okay. And um, the room where they will be presenting um, will it be conducive for them to be able to do a PowerPoint presentation? Um, would they need to provide, I'm just wondering, because we went to a qualifier last year and they couldn't find the, the outlet, which I, I know sounds ridiculous, but um, I, I'm just wondering what would the kids will have access to, um, what the responsibility of the teams are to provide, and um, I'm assuming setup of everything is part of the five minutes that they have to present. Yes, so for the, well, to set up, uh, the five minutes is part of that, yes. So pretty much when the door opens is when the timer starts and you have okay. a, the, the, the judges will enforce it at, to their best of their ability, pretty much. Um, if a team, it looks like they're almost done at five minutes, they might let them go over a little bit, but um, expect it to be a, a hard deadline. In terms of what's provided, um, I'm trying to pull up the season standards manual so I can read the verbiage exactly here. Um, mm -hmm. I have that manual open right now, so. Uh, oh boy. If I recall, we say that um, there may be a power outlet in the room. Yeah. Uh, we will, I will check with the central uh, tournament partner to see what she plans on providing there. Uh, central tournament power in project rooms. But other, th other than that, just the power cord, um, we, we, at most of our events, and so we just kind of put it out at all of our events, they are held at typically at school sites in classrooms and to kind of be nice to the teachers in those classrooms, we don't let teams use any of the materials in there. I mean, you can project up against the wall, but if the screen's not down, we're not going to pull it down type of thing. Uh, but sure. the, the projectors is the classrooms. We're not, we, we're not going to use it. Um, some teams have brought in a projector with them and projected on a something. Right. Uh, some teams have also just brought in a screen or just used the laptop and had it in front of the judges and talked over it type of thing. Okay. But um, 
Yeah. Can they assume that they'll have a table or should they work? I mean, they're the uh, it's pretty much just an open area. There's going to be no tables provided. Uh-huh. Um, we, it's just pretty much going to be an open a minimum, I think. Do I have it in here with the spaces? It'll be a fairly big okay. area, but there's going to be nothing set up in it. The only room that has a, a table set up would be um, core values if it's part of the challenge and the robot game obviously has the robot game table. Uh, the judges have a table they sit at that you can set, you know, if you have, you can put the laptop on there and demonstrate there, but mm -hmm. it becomes a bit weird trying to point at a, a slide and have it facing them at the same time type of thing. Sure. But you'll clarify whether there's outlets in the room. <laughs> yeah, I I have a note here to access uh, or to access to talk to the uh, our tournament partner for that qualifier and see what her plans are. Okay. And I might as well just ask all of our partners as well. So we'll be able to find out that information on the Team Connect page, or um, we'll we'll post team it team on the um, uh, the public event pages so if, if okay. that that if you go to this uh cvrobotics.org slash fll slash tournaments or you find the link in the menu um there's links to pages the individual calendar entries for every tournament and on there is where we will post it okay thank you mm -hmm. Anything else? Oh, I have one more question. Yeah. Um, as, um, in regards to the project, um, I know it specifies that they should choose an animal to focus their uh, re research on. You know? um, now, my kids are working on a, a project related to big cats. So what they're working on could relate to cheetahs, Leopards, tigers, I mean, there, there's a whole range of them, but should I have them just, like, choose just leopards or something and have it be their focus? You know what I mean? Or So I'll read the official kind of um, response we got from first. It's the same thing kind of okay. um, that was sent to a couple coaches. You know, can a team's project target multiple animals or multiple people? Um, a team solution may include multiple animals, but first suggests a team choose a specific animal, a singular animal, when identifying a problem. Um, specific problems lead to more specific, um, realistic, implementable solutions. Um, you know, right. going too okay. broad. Going too broad. If you, you're trying to you know, evaluate an ecosystem of problems, an ecosystem right. uh, can really present these very theoretical, abstract ideas for solutions. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. And no, we'll just keep it focused. But then, obviously, in the judging session, they can say. This solution also is helpful for the other big cats, of course. Yes. You know, yeah. Whatever. But, yeah. You know, okay. if, the, if, if, you know, the, the judges, there, <laughs> the manual this year was very conflicting in some of its verbiage. Some sections said <laughs> and, some mm -hmm. said multiple, some had plural animals, some had singular, and it was just very, even in the uh, update, it was singular and plural all over the place. So, yeah. The official kind of guidance for everyone is, you know, you can do multiple of either. And it's not going to be necessarily frowned upon. It's going to be more of analyzing the solution and all of that and going through that process. Right, right. Okay, yeah, we, can, we can make that work. I had the same question, so I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is the... Uh... What was one? And... <laughs> Yeah, that's the one clarification we have on our Q and A page right now is regarding the multiple yeah. animals and multiple people. <laughs> okay. <That's funny. laughs> uh, and what are the penalties worth? Like, what, if you get a touch penalty, you know, and the little goes in the corner, what is each touch penalty or a penalty worth? Um, it's five approximate. or six points uh, okay. it's minus six points each so it's up to a 30 okay. point deduction got it okay 
once you've gotten to the 30 points, you can keep touching without getting any manure points. Yes, because the re the referee has run out of manure samples at that point to put on the field. So, um, okay. yeah, there, there's there's no further penalty after the thirty. I should, uh, since this they're looking at the points, reminding me of this. The um, our version of the score sheet will get posted sometime in the next um, week before I leave for Rome. It'll get posted on our website, so okay. you'll be able to look at that. Um, first, I think has the global version posted on their website. We modified um, a bit to make it better for printing in black and white and um, adding a couple fields onto it and our logo. Uh, but um, yeah, so that'll get posted and it will be the same one that'll be used. You'll be able to download it, look at it, show it to the kids. It'll be the same one that's used on event day. Um, going through the qualifiers at least and hopefully first doesn't make any changes to the, the score sheet um, and and it's important the kids are familiar with it because they have to initial it after each match two kids stay behind to initial it um, and it's important that they understand it at least at a high level of what the judges are going to be asking especially for the missions that they're doing knowing what yes and no means um, so that when the judges goes over it, if they have any questions, they can ask then, because once they initial it, it's considered final. And then the referee clears the field for reset and we go from there. Okay. But yeah, we. And can the robot carry more than one object at a time? Um, you know, like carry, um, the, the the man and the dog and the gecko at the same time it, it, is that just as long as it doesn't say that that man. that would fall under that um you know if it doesn't say it's it's is that it? okay that my I understanding the only like one the manure kind of thing, so. yeah my understanding is the manure is the only one I'll let Matt or Matt okay. uh, Phil and Stephen chime in with if i'm wrong here but my only understanding is the the manure is the only one that's uh has the carrying restrictions that has the stipulation yeah okay okay, okay good yeah thank you any other questions we've got about 15 minutes left we can ask questions on anything and everything. <laughs> Robot game, judging, what to expect. Um, I have a quick question about Team Connect. Sure. Uh, can more than can more than one coach view the teams once they log into their own account, or can only the listed head coach see everything? The the what is first called the team administrator the head coach and the assistant coach or the primary and secondary contacts all receive invite codes and can register to manage the team. Okay. Cause I have an account, but I can't see any of my teams on my own account. So we might have to fix that later. <laughs> yes. Send me an email and I'll look into it. Um, and if you go to the add team page and click the, uh, what is it? Import. Check net or check national registration system. It attempts to match up your email address associated with your account with the email address from the national registration system. And if they do pair, then it will automatically add you to all the, the teams. Okay. But otherwise, if you just shoot me an, an email, shoot us an email and I can look into it too. Any other questions? I I just remembered something I can talk about, so I'll just jump into that real quick. Uh, coming this season, we are going to be changing how the team schedules look, how all of that stuff is created. Um, previously, it was a giant Excel spreadsheet that governed the schedules at an event. 
going this season, Team Connect will actually generate and manage all schedules. Um, kind of a stepping stone to stuff we want to do in the future. But what that also means is the event registration page is going to get redesigned and we're not going to necessarily be providing the full tabular list to every team. And that's not a document we're going to be creating because each team will get a printout and it's the same printout you'll be able to see on your end, which will list in order all the stuff you have to do on event day with including suggestions like your, this is your judging block. Be sure to bring everything you need for judging in this 45 minute window. Um, you're not going to necessarily have time to run back to the pits to grab your project materials if project is not your first session. It'll, if you sign up for practice matches, they'll automatically appear in that in order in that table and kind of match up with the agenda and what's going on. Um, the agenda will also be managed by Team Connect, so that document's changing. And so that whole process will be changing and Team Connect will be updated probably mid-November to support all of this in addition to enabling first leg league junior teams into the system as well and they will register for events and have similar features just like FLL teams do inside of Team Connect. Um, but so yeah. will we still get um, a schedule of everybody like all the teams that will the robot game schedule? Team Connect will um, create that but that's not necessarily something we're going to be printing in large scale pit admin might have a copy of it oh, but I it see. but it won't be no, I was just... it'll be available online and available um probably at pit admin but it won't be in, in each individual's team packet anymore or on our own team schedule will it say the team we will be up against for each of our matches that's what i'm wondering about because if we want to strategize with another team regarding which animal to put on the cooperation mission well i'm glad you nice suggested that because i can add that we can add that <laughs> <laughs> i will add that to the list um add yeah i guess so we wouldn't need the whole schedule just whichever team we're going up against for each match sure i can add the team number and name we can do that that should be that's not a big deal not sure yet if we're going to be doing that one but yeah it's definitely something to on. keep in mind <laughs> but yeah so we'll we'll add yeah. that and it should be a it's going to be a, a pretty big overhaul to that user interface we're going to also probably be merging the event results page and the event registrations page into one and unifying all of that so expect changes oh, wow. in mid-november to how all that's going to look yeah. but it's going to add a lot of features to where we want to go in the future it's a stepping stone because if Team Connect knows all the schedules, we can move to digital refereeing and digital judging. And that will be something cool for us, not this season, but in future seasons and doing a lot of cool stuff with allowing people to view, having stuff, mo mobile devices to be able to view schedules and change stuff and get notifications in real time. And we have a lot of vision of where we want to go. And this will be a, a very cool stepping stone um, this year. But do expect those changes because it will be different than anything we've ever done in, in previous seasons uh, and that's i will probably be uh editing all that code on my lovely 12-hour flights to rome so give me something to do Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah that's that's probably some of the major changes that will be coming to team connect over the rest of the season um and if if you guys have any issues bugs or whatever let us know and we're, we're, we're keeping track of a lot of ideas and stuff. And in the, the end of this year survey, we'll also be asking about Team Connect stuff as well. And, you know, feel free to provide suggestions and where you think we could improve. Um, it's definitely got a lot of power for um, what it has, especially since it's such a unified system. So, yep, just wanted to talk about that, let everyone know what was coming there. Any other questions on anything? Anything else? Yep, I'm good. Okay, just be sure to uh, start mailing your payments to event partners. Um, you should be, you will get a receipt when they enter the payment into Team Connect, uh, and it'll also show up as paid on your um, event registrations page. Uh, if you sent the payment and it's been a week or two and you haven't heard anything, um, you can shoot us an email and we'll check into it. Um, since it is a 
not an automatic process. It requires the partner to sit down and take a stack of checks and enter it. It's not something that happens on a daily basis, I should say. Um, so yeah, I think there's a couple already in and yeah, I think that is everything from my end that I can think of right now. Uh, our, you know, and if I will say, since we did talk about the volunteering stuff, since I just saw it on my computer here, if you guys have anyone you think that would be interested in volunteering, feel free to s the spread the word. Our kind of call for volunteers email blast will go out later this week that you can forward around, and our the volunteer recruitment flyer actually got posted earlier, actually yesterday, on our website, and that will go out in tomorrow, uh, later this week in that same email blast. So, love to get as many people involved as we can, and yeah, no experience necessary to volunteer. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, is there any other final questions? We got a couple minutes left. No. Alrighty. Can't think of anything else. Well, cool. Well, thank you all for joining us um, this evening. I'll go ahead and get this recording up on our website shortly, and I'll post it on the uh, Coach Seminars page as well. So, thank you all for joining tonight. I hope you guys all have a rate. Uh, rate? Uh, sorry, I'm losing the ability to speak. A great rest of the season. And we will see you all at the next coach seminar in November, hopefully, or at a qualifier later this year. Thanks. So take care, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Have a great trip. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> yeah, Bye. Have a great trip. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, enjoy the Bye -bye. pizza. <laughs> <laughs>